Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legend video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll do another entry here based on one of your suggestions. In this case, I wanted to actually do one that almost, I guess, takes care of other past suggestions as well. And that's because this suggestion and the information associated with it pretty much mimics the other suggestions too. So rather than doing like separate videos for each, because they're so similar, instead I'm going to focus on, I guess, the most popular one and then, uh, and then illustrate a lot of good information with it. Like in this case, the origins of this urban legend turned out to be pretty fascinating. And it's, it's really interesting to share that info here. And so in this case, I'm talking about the urban legends of, of, of the Kukui, which if you ever heard of that term is essentially the most famous, I guess, Mexican boogeyman of some sort, because uh, the other suggestions that other people have mentioned are either the boogeyman themselves or the sack man. All of those, again, very, very similar, but I think at least the most popular one seems to be in this area, the Kukui, and so I wanted to go ahead and showcase that here for you. So what is this Kukui? Well, here's all the good info, the origins tied to this urban legend. If you can believe it, it actually originates from the Portugal and the Galicia era. Uh, this, this notion of the Kukui has been around for quite some time, because if you wanted to go back, I guess, to the earliest incarnation of it, you can go to the 17th century century of some sort because there there's a rhyme that was within a book um, it's a book by Juan Caziz and in it the rhyme the way it translates from from Spanish to English is sleep child sleep now here comes the cuckoo and he will eat you so from it seems like that one little verb or one little passage of some sort that's where the legend of the cuckoo originated and if you wanted to go to another uh, option there there's a lullaby of some sort that was recorded later on that adds more information. Um, in this case, it adds more versions or urban legends of the Kukui. And that this one also translates in English too. It says, leave Kukui, leave Kukui, go to the top of the roof, let the child have a quiet sleep. So those are at least some of the earliest origins with this Kukui. Where the name comes from itself, it's apparently a uh, word that's spelled Coco, but I believe it's pronounced Kukoi, so I'm not 100% sure, someone might have to correct me on that, but it's a word that's located there in Portuguese that essentially means ghost with a pumpkin head. So if you ever wanted to know that little trivia and share it with any of your friends, family members, then you'll know this, the word Kukui comes from that word in Portuguese, which in turn means a ghost with a pumpkin head. Another version is it also can mean the word skull. So yet another interesting notion regarding its uh, word origin. But in essence, the Kukui itself, um, it's look it can look like that it can look like a ghost with a pumpkin head or it can look like a skull or it can look like practically anything because the way that the urban legends has stretched out with the kukui essentially it's all of the above and then some it's a shape-shifting monster of some sort it could be a man it could be a spirit it could be a shadow it could be invisible it can be anything essentially all it is is it's whatever I guess the person at that time is telling the story of decides for it to be but the most common situation at least for kids because that's this whole notion of the kukui is it's as a way to ensure that either a you can frighten kids with a scary story or B, showcase to them a uh, uh, something that would be a warning of some sort. But the most common situation is that it's a monster. In some cases, or in most cases, it's something on lines of like your average Hollywood monster. Small, hairy, red eyes, big ears, just razor sharp teeth, just everything you can think of when it comes to something that would scare the bejesus out of a little kid. But of course, with other versions of the Kukui, it's anything and uh, 
uh, everything else. Um, and some it's it's it can be a humanoid, it can be an alligator. There's another version of it involving it being a dragon, if you can believe that. To me, the scariest notion involves the idea of it being a shadow, because shadow people obviously comes to mind. But when it comes to something like that, it can just then hide into anything. As long as there's a shadow, then it's around and just patiently waiting to abduct your, uh, yourself as a child. That's why uh, the story of the Kukui is always told almost as a warning of some sort because everything is about avoiding the Kukui coming out at night. So it's almost like a way to verbally chastise a child into doing something that the parent wants them to do without having to do much effort or work. So let's say a child is just screaming their head off, acting just real bratty then all the parent has to do is say if you don't shut up then the kukui is going to come at night to get you and then of course the child not knowing any better immediately does so and in fact on that scary for kids website it takes things a little further because uh, there was someone I guess that posted a story that they had I think though there's a twist of some sort and I'll give my opinion here in a minute but she was stating that uh, she was growing up in a small town in Mexico her mother used to always tell her these kind of stories just to scare her but in some cases also to tell her you know this is the stuff that can happen to you if you don't obey me that kind of stuff well one day that child said she was so angry at her mother that she inadvertently just cursed at her obviously this was a huge turning point and then the mother looking just so pissed off like so angry herself at having been cursed by her child then told her slowly and calmly that because of what she did the kukui was going to come that night and scratch her feet and so the child uh, was getting a little scared Maybe they thought that it was not going to be something that will happen. But sure enough, that night, after falling to sleep and waking up the next morning, that's when she noticed that her feet were sore. And then looking at the bottom, she had long red scratches on the bottom. And so, of course, at least with her, she was thinking uh, if either A, the Kukui truly did visit that night because of, of the situation involving cursing at their mother, or B, most likely, which I believe is this, this, this is the case, because uh, this is just makes more sense the mother was just crazy and decided to scratch the feet of her daughter herself to kind of teach her a lesson and to make her know that yes there is something out there even if it is the mother pretending to be the kukui but trying to trick her into I guess doing the right thing thereafter teach her a lesson in other words but that's again that's essentially the uh, good synopsis a good version of what the kukui is to this very day it's always something on lines of a lesson a teaching uh, you better do something right or else the kukui will come out that kind of stuff um, there have been again lullabies rhymes just told for ages now from parents to the children uh, sometimes it's even compared to the devil if you can believe that too uh, I would imagine in some certain parts of, of, of uh, regions and communities that they do take that to that specific extreme where it's instead of let's say just your average boogeyman or ghost of some sort no in this case it's an actual devil um, there's also the idea that it's a deity uh, if, a deity being one of those I guess fallen gods that may have been uh, just living or roaming around the earth there's that notion as well so yet again another version involving the uh, kukui and what it could exactly be so lots of interesting stuff associated then with this urban legend I was trying to see if anyone has ever just for the sake of it to see if anyone has ever found any proof associated with the kukui but no no of course nothing along those lines all it, all it is at the end of the day is just simply something involving a way to get a child to do uh, the right thing to get a child to not do something bad by the from the parent to ensure that they are uh either corrected or something along the lines of getting back at them so that's in essence what at least my opinion is but still if anyone has any more information tied to the kukui that'd be really really good to hear anybody else that grew up with your parents telling you that uh, something along those lines of you better do this xyz or else uh, the kukui will visit you those are always fun stories to hear uh, i'll always run into those every now and then where um 
someone will mention that yes absolutely you know the parents were telling me that and of course nothing ever really happened it's just something along those lines of being able to ensure that uh that that it's that it's just your parents messing around with the kids by the way if you wanted to see how far these uh urban legends go and the belief that people have in them even if it is just for fun or just for jest there are festivals associated with the kukui in fact you're looking at some of the pictures here uh related to it there's one called the festival of the kukui and then another one is the kukui fair which is i guess is translates to um the Kukui Festival. So pretty interesting stuff. There are places out there that absolutely celebrate uh, the notion of this urban legend. In those cases, they represent it more as being a true dragon-like monster of some sort rather than, say, like a boogeyman type. So anyways, again, that's all the information tied to it. Please post those comments below if you have anything else that showcases uh, good info that I might have missed with regards to this fascinating urban legend. So all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.